It's a scandal that originated in Malaysia, but the investigation has spread to at least 10 other countries around the world. It allegedly involves celebrities, Las Vegas gambling, lots of diamond jewelry, rare artwork, and even the Wolf of Wall Street movie. I'm talking about 1MDB, Malaysia's sovereign wealth fund, the centre of one of the world's biggest cases of white-collar crime. In September 2009, Malaysia's new Prime Minister Najib Razak set up 1MDB. The fund's purpose was to borrow money to grow investment and stimulate Malaysia's economy. Unlike most sovereign wealth funds, Malaysia didn't start with a huge pile of cash. It had to raise money through things like bond sales and joint ventures. And it was through three of these business deals that the scandal unfolded. Unfortunately, sadly, tragically, a number of corrupt 1MDB officials treated this public trust as a personal bank account. Investigators say at least $4.5 billion was misappropriated from 1MDB when money landed in various Swiss and Singaporean bank accounts, tied back to a few central characters. I know, I know, it's complicated. So complex that one Malaysian nonprofit designed this board game to help people come to grips with how the money was spent. Many of the assets you see here are actual assets listed in that report. They even made figurines of the key characters named in the Department of Justice report. So, who are they? Malaysian Official One is mentioned more than 30 times in the Department of Justice report, but never referred to by name. The official is widely believed to be Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak, but Mr. Najib has denied any wrongdoing. The 1MDB case began to make international headlines in July 2015, after the Wall Street Journal reported it had seen a paper trail tracing $680 million from 1MDB into Mr. Najib's personal bank accounts. Malaysia's Attorney General cleared Mr. Najib of wrongdoing, saying the $680 million was a legal donation from Saudi Arabia, and most of it was returned. But the Department of Justice says nearly 30 million in 1MDB funds was used to buy jewelry for Malaysian official one's wife, including a rare 22 carat pink diamond set in a necklace, which cost 27.3 million alone. In the face of intense criticism, Mr. Najib removed his critics, including his deputy prime minister. He also replaced the attorney general, who had been investigating 1MDB. Another key player in the 1MDB saga is Jolo who is named in the Department of Justice report. His whereabouts are currently unknown. Lo, whose real name is Lo Tik Jo, has no formal position within 1MDB. I found politics to be very interesting. But he's known to be a longtime friend of the Malaysian Prime Minister's stepson, Riza Aziz. U.S. investigations have pinpointed Mr. Lo as having a significant role in the fund's creation and brokering 1MDB's major business deals, which may be why he's alleged to have gotten a lion's share of 1MDB funds. He made headlines in the US for his big spending and was frequently photographed with celebrities like Paris Hilton. It appears that Mr. Low went on a major shopping spree between 2009 and 2014. More than 250 million in proceeds from the first 1MDB bond offering were used to purchase a 300 foot luxury mega yacht called the Equanimity. Mr. Low bought lots of real estate in New York City and Beverly Hills including a penthouse which was once home to Jay-Z and Beyonce for $30.6 million. Then there were the casinos. The Department of Justice says more than $25 million was wired to Caesars Palace and the Venetian in Las Vegas, where several individuals gambled on his account. He also purchased about $200 million worth of jewelry using funds traced to 1MDB and a Deutsche Bank loan. About $8 million of that jewelry went to Australian model Miranda Kerr. He also spent more than $100 million on art, including a $3.2 million piece by Pablo Picasso, which he gave actor Leonardo DiCaprio for his birthday. Both Leonardo DiCaprio and Miranda Kerr have returned their gifts to the Department of Justice. Riza Aziz, stepson of the Malaysian Prime Minister, had more than $200 million funneled to his personal bank account, according to prosecutors. With that money, Mr. Aziz purchased things like an original Wizard of Oz movie poster from 1939 for a cool $75,000 and nearly $100 million worth of real estate in the UK and US. But a significant portion of the money was sent to Red Granite Pictures, a Hollywood company run by Mr. Aziz. Red Granite financed films like Dumb and Dumber 2, Daddy's Home, and of course, the Oscar-nominated Wolf of Wall Street. 
Aziz and Lowe even got a shout out in Leonardo DiCaprio's Golden Globe speech in 2014. Joey, Riz, and Joe, thank you for being uh, not only collaborators but taking a, a risk on on this movie. Reed Granite recently came to an undisclosed settlement with the U.S. government. The Department of Justice is trying to seize all of these assets and more, worth 540 million in total. This is because it says misappropriated funds were used to purchase them. In response to U.S. actions, the Malaysian government said that the Department of Justice never sought this cooperation. In October, Malaysia's Attorney General asked Malaysian police to reopen the investigation into 1MDB. Malaysia's general elections will likely be held this year, and it's clear that the 1MDB debacle is the elephant in the room. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. If you want to check out more CNBC Explains, click here and here. Don't forget to subscribe.